what we want to look at here is the gradient mesh tool. And the gradient mesh tool is um, amazingly simple to work with and yet creates um, what has now become incredibly beautiful and subtle and sophisticated um, uh, images like these that look like they've been professionally airbrushed. And um, when we uh, uh, look at this image, for instance, and we start to uh, take it apart, we can see um, what is going on here. And notice that when I click on it with one of the selection tools, um, what we see is that actually this um, is covered in what appears to be a netting or a mesh type material. What is actually going on here is that at each of these intersections, each of these intersections, um, what we have is an anchor point. And the anchor point is the source of the color. And for every one of these anchor points, we can add uh, some different sh shades, whether it's subtle or it's dramatic, of different color. And, um, and by then manipulating the anchor points like we always do, we can, um, uh, you know, as I say, add some color, and we'll look at this more closely. And uh, then we're able to come in here and manipulate uh, these shapes and these anchor points. Notice I'm just clicking. We've got handlebars, if there are curves. And um, it works uh, beautifully. And by having very subtle difference of shades of color, that is how we can, in fact, create these beautiful airbrushed looking pieces of art. All right, so let's uh, take a look at how we actually do this, which is incredibly simple. I'm just amazed at how sophisticated it is. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create an oval. Um, uh, as always, we can add it to any shape we want, but I'm going to just start by keeping it simple. And um, then I want to add uh, some color. And I'm going to um, add, um, I want to show you something before we get started uh, too far here. Okay. And that is that one thing that you cannot do uh, very well um, with uh, this um, is you cannot add the gradient mesh to a shape that already has a gradient in it. Again, you cannot add gradient mesh to a shape that is already filled with a gradient. The reason being is because this is what will happen. The first thing we'll do is we'll go over here and we'll get the gradient mesh tool. And when I apply it to a shape that already has a gradient, look what happens. It automatically turns it black. And so unless you want that uh, background to be black, then you do not uh, want to try and add mesh to something that already has a gradient, okay? So that's an important point. The, um, so um, having said that, I will um, go ahead and um, just add my, um, my colors. My, uh, I'll just add a solid color swatch, okay? And um, let's just uh, add a color here. And, uh, okay, um, so I'm going to fill my shape with a solid color. And generally the way I start is, uh, especially for any of you who um, are, are painters or have worked with paint, you often start by filling your background with a very, very light shade of color, and then you build darker, richer tones on top of that. I take that same um, uh, sort of... Uh, way of doing things with the gradient mesh. So I'm purposely picking a very pale, very light color. If it was a leaf, 
uh, that I wanted to create, then I would start with probably a very light green. But I'll start with this color, and then I get the gradient mesh tool. Now, this is important. Where my tool is when I click it is very important because that is where there'll be one of these intersections, one of these intersections, which is where the color is going to be added and will radiate out from. And um, notice uh, another point here very quickly that uh, when you have a shape that uh, is oval or is in some way um, infers that it's rounded, um, uh, it's interesting that the gradient mesh tool automatically uh, takes on the, um, the, the rounded or three-dimensional feel of the shape that you've created, which I think is pretty cool. So um, at any rate, um, I have an intersection here, and um, I'll add some, uh, some color to it. And you see, there we have it. And then we can go someplace else on our shape and another section and click that, and it adds another um, area that we can add color to. Again, another intersection. And so as we keep clicking, we can break the shape up into smaller, more uh, subtle areas of, for color. And um, then once we do that, we can come back with the white arrow tool and we can, as I indicated, manipulate the curves themselves. And if it uh, is a curve, we've got handlebars. And so those can be um, worked. And uh, as much, um, uh, a, a fewer areas of mesh will create a larger um, uh, area of color, diffused color, spread out color, if you will. And of course, the more um, intersections that you put into the shape, then the, the smaller, more detailed areas of color that we will have to work with. And uh, it's really just that simple. Um, two uh, points I'd like to make. Um, and you'll figure out some techniques that work for you, but a couple of things. Um, if you want, uh, like for this leaf, uh, these leaves here, you want a hard area, or kind of a hard, almost brush stroke um, area of color, you can uh, create that by doing this. Notice what I'm going to do here. I'm going to um, add some gradient mesh. Um, in this case, let me just go ahead and put some color. And notice I'm shift clicking these anchor points. Okay. And you can change the colors. Okay. So I'm going to put, you see, uh, this area of green in here. And um, if I want this to be a harder edge, almost like a brush stroke piece of uh, color, I can use other areas of mesh to push it or almost fence it in, if you will. Watch what happens. I'm going to put a mesh line on either side of this uh, shape. And then, um, you know, I can come in here. Um, See, I'll come here, here, I'll, I'll pick these anchor points, and I'm going to put a pretty strong color in here, and then deselect it. And look what's happened. You see, I have this very strong little area of intense color, and it's due to the fact that I have a mesh line on either side of it that pushes or fences it in. So that's one little technique that's pretty cool that I've figured out. Another one is what's going on down here. And again, notice there's kind of a hard edge to this purple area that you don't see in other places. And I created this by bending by bending the, uh, the mesh lines and the meshing. And once again, you can create a hard, uh, stronger edge. 
So those are a couple of little techniques that um, you might find helpful. And uh, 